Did you get the sense that, that um, individuals are discriminated against when they apply for housing? Yes, and that's something that I, didn't even, I had never thought of prior to this class. And I had the opportunity to take an active stance and approach to combat discrimination. I recently did a service learning project with my human resource management class. Um, students in human resource management spend a lot of the semester uh, studying discrimination in its various forms in the employment context. And one thing that I really wanted to hone in on this semester was the subtler forms of discrimination. In other words, everybody knows that if they see a job advertisement that says women need not apply, um, that that's discrimination. We can call those easy ones out. But it is the subtler stuff that goes on uh, that I wanted students to, to begin to develop an eye towards seeing. And so I teamed up with um, the Fair Housing Center in Holyoke. Um, to have students do some hands-on research in the area of discrimination in housing. Unfortunately, the nature of the work that they did for the Fair Housing Center is a little bit top secret, and so we can't tell you exactly precisely what they did for the Fair Housing Center, but we can tell you what they learned. Um, we began the semester by exploring the linchpin of anti-discrimination effort in the United States, which is a law called the Civil Rights Act. It was passed in 1964, um, and Title VII of that act makes uh, discrimination in employment unlawful. Um, students then connected discrimination in employment with discrimination in housing in their work uh, at the Fair Housing Center. I want to look at Civil Rights Act Title VII, you know, as a work in progress. You know, there were many orders issued prior to, this, uh, to the Civil Rights Act Title VII, um, and also more afterwards that to me tells a story, an evolution, you know, of progress in U.S. history towards making equality accessible to everybody and not just a small few. Roll them. All right. Good morning, class. Uh, my name is Tyler Dietrich, and my presentation will be on affirmative action. So, as most of you know, affirmative action is a very controversial topic in the United States. Uh, for those of you that don't, uh, affirmative action is the policy of favoring members of a disadvantaged group who currently suffer or have historically suffered from discrimination within a culture. Uh, this typically applies to uh, enrollment and education and employment, so there's equal opportunity. And yesterday I was applying for a job online, and during the application process, it had asked me if I was at least 18 years of age or older in order to apply for the job, which I had already answered that question, yes. And later on in the application process, I later had to put in a required field of what my date of birth was, which to me leads, leads me to believe that they're going to just kind of filter me out because of my age, and that's a very good possibility. But I could not finish the application process unless I had put that field in. So I did it, and I'll see what happens. While doing my research for my presentation on um, gender discrimination, that there's still a lot that goes on, and it may be a little bit more um, well hidden than it used to be. It's not so out there and up front, but that there's still a long way uh, that needs to be traveled before we reach a point where women are equal not just in pay, but also in how they're treated in the workplace and how they're hired at a job. <laughs> Did you get the sense that, that um, individuals are discriminated against when they apply for housing? Yes, and that's something that I, didn't, I had never thought of prior to this class or even going down there that that would happen. Um, I mean, I, did, I have purchased several homes and I realized just going through like the lead certificates that you, you need to do you let a home or you can't have small children in this state? But I didn't think, you know, when it came to an apartment, it would have that big of an effect. And then, you know, after getting some more information on it, I kind of understand how that kind of sucked, trying to find a place as, like, a single parent with young kids. 
especially in like a community like Palmer or Ware, where they're in older buildings, they don't have like apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. They have like multifamily houses that were all built like in the 1950s and have lead paint. So, Good point. And um, I came to the realization that for especially women with children, it's going to be difficult to acquire an apartment. Um, they were mo mostly concerned with addressing issues with landlords, and I had the opportunity to take an active stance and approach to combat discrimination. At least, I found it very interesting the implications when someone asks you, "Do you have children?" Um, if someone, if a tenant, a prospective landlord rather asks a tenant, you know, "Do you have children?" That's not allowed. And the implication of asking you that might hint at something that they are not up to date with or up to regulation with. And because they're not there, they're going to discriminate against that person. Um, for me, you know, it was an eye-opening experience, um, one that I'm going to treasure for the rest of my life. Thank you. Um, one pleasant surprise that, uh, that I got through the project and that I think the students got through the project and that we as a class got was um, a desire expressed by many students to continue their work at the Fair Housing Center. In other words, when the project was over, they were disappointed and were really sort of curious as to whether they could continue their relationship with the community partner. Um, and the community partner, Fair Housing Center, was more than happy to keep them on. And so um, several of the students intend to continue their relationship um, with uh, Fair Housing next fall um, and continue to do some more work there. And so I think our relationship with the Fair Housing Center will continue for many, many years. Um, and um, uh, I think I can speak for all of us to say that both sides of the relationship uh, got a tangible benefit out of the project.